انا ما اسمع اي احد ان يصورني والذي صور احذف الله يرضى عليك I do not permit anyone to take any photos or any filming of me so those of you that are filming or taking photos amana please delete it الله يرضى عليك ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان الاصدق الكلام كلام الله والخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد عباد الله recently i have returned back from a umrah trip and walillah alhamd we pray that allah azza wa jalla accepts it from us there were individuals that were required from me or asked of me some nasiha and they said indeed our hearts are saddened our hearts are saddened that we are leaving the blessed lands and after performing the umrah and leaving the blessed lands and we are coming back to the lands that we reside in now what is your nasiha and what do you advise so i would like to share with my brothers and my sisters what i did share with individuals from that group firstly i say my brother my sister anyone that goes to those blessed lands indeed he affects the hearts he affects the hearts of the believers and leaving such blessed places indeed touches the heart as it did with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and likewise his companions the ridwan allah ta'ala alayhim and nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam waqif fi makkah فقال والله انك لخير الارض الله واحب ارض الله الي والله لولا اني اخرجت منك ما خرجت رواه ابن ماجه وصححه شيخ الباني رحم الله the messenger of allah صلى الله عليه وسلم standing in mecca said regarding that ard that place mecca that it indeed this is the best place on the earth and from all of the land of allah you are most beloved to me and had it not been that i have been told to leave it then i would never have left you this is what the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about mecca likewise even medina even medina whoever leaves medina then subhanallah those of you that i've been to the city of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then you have to leave you know that feeling and that feeling was likewise for the companions of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam but whenever i do leave medina i always reflect how it must have been for muadh bin jabal رضي الله تعالى عن. Not only did he have to leave, but he had to hear the following. A kissa, wallahi, that touches even the hardest of the hearts, and even hard to narrate. The, pre- the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم لما بعث معاذ بن جبل إلى اليمن. فخرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم معه يوسي ومعاذ راقب 
والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تحت راحلته when the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was sending Mu'adh to Yemen he walked out with him and Mu'adh bin Jabal was on his riding beast and the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was advising him that when you go to Yemen how to give da'wah he was advising him sending him for the sake of Allah to spread the kalima of la ilaha illallah and as he was explaining that to him after he finished he said to him ya mu'adh innaka asa ala talqani ba'da ami hadha la'allaka an tamurra bi masjidi wa qabri fabaka mu'adh khashya'an li firaqi rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said to Mu'adh, Mu'adh, perhaps you will return and you will pass by my masjid and you will pass by my grave. Upon hearing that, the fear of the separation of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mu'adh could not hold his tears. Imagine that, not only leaving the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam city but parting from the one who is a rahma and a mercy to mankind wa fi riwayat ahmad the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said la tabki ya muad the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to muad muad do not cry imagine how it must have been for him wa bima khashya qad waqa and that which he feared regarding the parting indeed occurred. For indeed, when Mu'adh ibn Jabal came back, he did not see the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That encounter of walking out with him was the last words and the last time he saw the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But look at what the Messenger gave him. This is the nasiyah that I also give to myself and to my brothers and my sisters. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said to him, turning towards Medina to soften his heart, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna ahl al ulai, yarawna annahum awla nas bi, wa inna awla nas bi al muttaqoon, man kanu wa haythu kanu. He said, Mu'adh, Verily, my family and my people of Medina think that they are the closest and more deserving of me. But the ones more deserving of me are the muttaqoon. Wherever they are and whoever they are, wherever they are, he said, ensuring him that if you are amongst the muttaqoon, even if you're in Yemen, then you are close to me. So then... It is upon us, upon us. وَعَلَيْنَا أَن نَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ اللَّهُمَّ يَجْعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ It is from us to be then from the muttaqoon. O oh Allah, make us from them. So yes, my brother, my sister, your heart aches, but this is something which is a thing that is known, that whoever goes to the blessed lands, you will feel this just as it was felt with the companions of the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the nasiha is, the question is, is our Umrah maqbula? Is our Umrah accepted? Qalu al-ulama al-ilm Allah. The ulama, they say, that the knowledge is with Allah. Whether your Umrah has been accepted or rejected. Walakin hunak al-alamat. However, they are signs. And from those signs, the ulama, they say, that you return better. When you have come back from the umrah, you are now a better person. You stay away from the haram. You carry out more acts of righteousness. These are from the signs that indeed that umrah affected you, that umrah aided and helped you. You have come back and now you're a better Muslim. 
You're someone whose alaqa with your Lord is better. So these are the signs. So then how can we maintain that? How can we maintain the goodness that we have received and the blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal? For indeed it was a blessing. For verily the ones that are called to Umrah is not mere the ones that had physical ability and financial ability. Rather Allah Azza wa Jal called you. Allah Azza wa Jal da'akum fa'ajabu. Allah called you and you answered. Allah refers to them as wafdullah, the group and the party of Allah. So you need to be thankful servants to that. And how can you maintain this righteousness? There are some bullet points. First and foremost, I advise my brothers and my sisters, especially the brothers, be close to the masjid. Be close to the masjid for indeed it is the most beloved place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And stay away from those areas and places that will compromise your religion, what will compromise you with your halal and your haram. Be wise, stay away from such places. Also, I advise my brothers and my sisters, the Quran, the Quran, which is a guidance to mankind, the Quran, which is a cure to the hearts, that Quran that aided the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions to fight against the Kuffar and to conquer what they conquered and to spread the word of Islam. It was from the guidance of the Quran. قال الله عز وجل إن هذا القرآن يحدي للتي هي أكوم ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Verily this Qur'an, it guides to that which is most just and upright. And it gives glad tidings to the believers, those believers that work, out, work righteous actions, that they shall have a great reward. This is how the Qur'an has been described. Also we have... A verse in the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nas, Qad jaatkum maw'idhatum min rabbikum, wa shifa'un lima fi sudur, wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, O mankind, there has come to you a good counsel and advice, meaning this Quran. And Allah azza wa jal explains it and says, and it is a cure for that which is in the chests. A guidance and mercy for the believers. We must be close to the Quran. We must read it. We must understand it. If you don't have the ability for the Arabic, at least read the translations. Make it something that families sit and discuss it and read it together. It will bring your hearts closer. Indeed, it is the strongest form of guidance that we have. It is something that cures and protects. So we must be plentiful of it. Another thing which I advise as well, which is extremely important, my brother and my sister, to protect the istikama that you want to be on, you must look to see who your companion is. Who are your companions? Who are the ones that you are giving your ear to? Who are the ones that you are with plentiful and giving your time to? Are they reminding you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are they inviting you to good or to evil? There is so much mention of that in the Quran and in the Sunnah. Qala Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ar-rajulu ala dini khalilihi Falyanzuru ahadakum may yukhalil رواه الابن ماجة والترمذي وحسنه شيخ الباني رحمه الله تعالى. The messenger said, indeed, a man is upon the religion of his companion. So therefore, look to who he takes as a companion. How your companions are, you will be like that. Or at the very least, it will rub off on you. Allah subhanahu wa taala. 
knower of all affairs, has made clear indication to this and give us a warning. And we cannot have a clear warning more than this, where Allah Azza wa Jalla states, وَيَوْمَ يَعْدُ ظَالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْ And on that day, meaning يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ It's too late to come back. That day, the wrongdoer, the sinner, will bite on his hands. يَقُولْ يَا لَيْتَنِي اتَّخَفْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا If only I would have embarked upon the path with the messenger. That right path. And then he will say, يَا وَيْلَتَا لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانَ خَلِيلًا Woe be to me that I took him as a companion. This individual that Allah explains, لَقَدْ أَظَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي Verily, he took me away from the remembrance, this Qur'an, the correct path, after it reached me. This is regarding the companion that you may now think has your back. The person, the sister or the brother that you think, no, he cares for me, loves me. Just measure it. Measure that love and goodness according to the mizan of Ar-Rahman. Is he or she inviting you to good? When you are with them, how is your iman? What are, what are the things that you are discussing? Where are you sitting? What are you watching? What are you doing? And this also goes for our children. We must be protective for our children. Where are our children going and who are their companions? Wallahi, it plays a big role. If Allah Azza wa Jal has clearly indicated that a bad companion can take you away from the Sirat al mustaqeen then we must take heed. So these are some of the points, my brothers, and my sisters, bi idnillah, that will aid us to remain firm after the blessed trip that Allah has blessed us with. May Allah keep us firm. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa jama'in. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wabad. Can I firstly ask the brothers to move forward, please? Make room for your brothers at the back. We have a lot of brothers that are standing. From those things that will be aid us to remain firm, that we must constantly think about the reality that every one of us cannot avoid. And that is death. Al Mawt. As Allah Azza wa Jal states in the Quran, Kul inna al Mawta, Alladhi tafiruna min, fa inna hu mulaqikum. Say, Muhammad to them, Verily the death from which you flee will surely meet you. There's no avoiding that. Thumma taruduna ila alim al Ghaybi wa shahada. Then you will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-knower of the unseen and the seen. And indeed, he will inform you of what you used to do. So death will come to all of us. Whether we think about it or not, just on this trip, as I traveled about to board onto the plane, I receive a phone call that one of our brothers, Abdullah Rahimullah, has passed away, and yet he is younger than me. Who would have thought? And while we was on another trip, we hear that the mother of one of our brothers has also passed away. It can come at any time. Death does not look at age. We must constantly think. And the second part of that is, know that after our death, we will return to our Lord. And we will stand in front of him. And that standing will either be easy or heavy, dependent upon how you was in this life. We have to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal, that we are not from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes. When he says, Kul 
الذي وكل بكم ثم إلى ربكم ترجعون. Say to them that indeed that angel, that angel of death, who was appointed to take their soul, will come to them, and then they shall return to us. Then Allah Azza wa Jal then describes now the moment of the standing and the standing of the wrongdoers, the standing of those who are neglectful, disbelieving, and wrong. Allah Azza wa Jal from His mercy has informed us. So we try our utmost best not to be from them. Allah Azza wa Jal He says, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ نَاكِسُوا رُؤُوسِهِمْ إِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ and if you was to see the mujrimun, the wrongdoers, hanging their head down in front of their Lord, hanging their head down, knowing that they were wrong, and they were plead, رَبَّنَا بَصَرْنَا وَسَمِعْنَا فَرْجِعْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحَا إِنَّا مُوكِنُونَ Oh Allah, we have seen and we have heard. Return us back and we will work righteous actions. Indeed, we believe with certainty. And there on few further ayat, then Allah Azza wa Jalla addresses them. فَذُوكُوا بِمَا نَسِيتُمْ لِقَاءَ أَيُومِكُمْ حَاذَا إِنَّا نَسِيْنَاكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jalla says to them, Taste, this is what you forgot. This is what you denied and forgot. And today, you shall be forgotten. وَذُوكُوا عَذَابَ الْخُلْدِ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ So then taste the eternal punishment, everlasting punishment, due to your actions. So this is another thing that we need to reflect. The inevitable, which is death, and then the standing in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. We must prepare for that. And when you think about that, then bi'idhnillah, that will aid you, bi'idhnillah, to remain firm. And lastly, I advise that have honor regarding your religion. Honor your religion. Honor the customs of your religion. For indeed, that is true honor. Be proud to be a Muslim. Be proud to act upon the commands of your Lord. And do not be shy to stay away from the prohibitions. Do not give in to peer pressure. For indeed, Islam is what gives us honor. Adhering to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is real honor. Even if you are from the poorest of people or the weakest in status, but if you are good with Allah, then that is true honor. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and he said, Inna kunna adhal al qawm fa'azzan Allahu bil Islam. Umar ibn Khattab he said, Verily, we were a people that was low and humiliated. And then Allah Azza wa Jal gave us honor through Islam. Fa'mahma natlubu al izza bi ghayri ma azzan Allahu bi adhalan Allah. And whenever we will seek then honor, and sharaf and nobility through other than what Allah made us honorable with, then you will be humiliated. Remember this. It is Islam that gives us strength. It is Islam that gives us honor, nothing else. And I want to finish off with a story to prove this point that I'm saying now. Even though we all believe and we're brothers and sisters, but the reminder benefits the story of an individual that had nothing, had nothing, but yet look at the sharaf that he received and the nobility and the honor. Qissa to Julaybi. The story of Julaybi. Wa huwa ansari from the ansar. Wa kana qasiran dameeman khilqa. He was an individual that said as described to be as deformed. And he was an individual that was short and not pleasant to look at. غير منصوب أي لا يعرف النسب He did not have a lineage to go back to. And in the time of the Arab, your strength and honor was that you come from a tribe that is known and strong. And if you don't have a tribe behind you, 
then your qeem and your worth was nothing. So this individual, not only is his appearance in this manner and described, short, somewhat deformed, not pleasant to look at, and yet a nobody, belongs to no tribe. However, when he met the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Iman entered into his heart. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him on occasion, that I will get you married. And he said, who will marry the likes of me? So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sought for his hand from one of the nobles of Ansar. And when the hand was sought, the father of the bint couldn't say no to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said, فَأُشَاوْرْ أَحْلِي Let me speak to my family. And when the mother was told, then she said, SubhanAllah, مَا وَجَدَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ إِلَى جُلَيْبِيبًا There's no one else that he could put forth except for Julaybib. No, we will not give our daughter to Julaybib. But when the daughter, she heard this. When the daughter, she heard this, she came and she said, أَتُرِيدُونَ أَن تُرُدُّوا عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَمْرَ Are you going to reject the request of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and in one narration it mentioned she recited the verse wa ma kana li mu'minin wa la mu'minatin idha qada allahu wa rasuluhu amran an yakuna lahum al khaira min amrihim it is not for the believing man or for the believing woman when allah and his messenger has decreed a matter that they should have any say or decision in that this is the iman that she had so she married him regarding his status and how he was and then very shortly there was a battle with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he went out to accompany the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when the battle was finished they would send out the messenger would always ask hal tafkiduna min ahadin is any of you missing any of your family or your people qalu la he said walakinni afkidu julaybiban he said, verily, I am missing Julaybib. No one thought about Julaybib because he had no family. So when they went out to look for their family, Julaybib was not in the equation. But the messenger remembered him because he was close to the messenger. And the messenger said that I am missing Julaybib. So then they found Julaybib. And he had seven of the mushrikeen around him killed. فَأَتَاهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَقَامَ عَلَيْهِ And then the messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, then came to Julaybib and stood over him. Looked at him and stood over him. And then he said, قَتَلَ سَبْعَةٌ وَقَتَلُوا Verily, he killed seven. Bearing in mind, he was short. And the figure that he had, he still fought like a warrior for Islam to bring Islam to me and you. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, Hada minni wa ana minhu. He said, This man is from me and I am from him. This is honor, my brothers and my sisters. When the Messenger repeated, Hada minni wa ana minhu, he is from me and I am from him. This is honor. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took a hold of him and placed him on his forearms and lowered him into the grave. What more honor do you want from a man that had nothing but yet the Messenger attributed him to be from him and lowered him into his grave. So be proud to be a Muslim. Be proud to hold on to the Quran and be proud to hold on to the Sunnah of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah keep us firm and keep our families firm and keep our children firm. Ameen. Wa sallallahu barak ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.